Hi, today we're going to be studying about Andrew Wyeth. He was a famous American painter and he was born in 1917 in Pennsylvania. He was homeschooled by his father who focused on Wyeth's art abilities and by the time he was grown he was assisting his father who was a famous um, illustrator and artist and he liked to experiment with things like watercolor and egg tempera, as well as vantage points, light, still moving movement, um, varying landscapes. And this is his most famous work of art, Christina's World. You've probably seen it, but he also loved windows and he drew, he sketched, he painted over 300 pieces that included windows. And from those windows, you could see things like snow scenes, winter scenes, flowing curtains with a landscape behind it. Here he's focusing on the fruit in front of the window. And he also, this one from a Cushing window, it shows blueberry pickers going out to harvest the blueberries. And here you see a cold spell. There's icicles hanging down. You've got another winter scene. And here he has much bolder colors. You'll notice in most of his works, he uses very muted tones and um, a subdued color palette. He also loved to experiment with um, resist, watercolor resist. And here in the first snow, you'll see how he could, he would drop um, resist fluid on his canvas and let it dry. And then he would paint over it. And after the watercolor dried, he would remove the resist and it would make it look like there were snowflakes falling. And he did several like that. So today we're going to be experimenting with a window scene. And you'll need watercolor paper. And I've used half inch painter's tape to frame out the edges and to make the window pane in the center. So it looks like you're looking through a window. Now, a little bit about the color wheel. Our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And as you can see here, they're very vibrant. But how do we subdue a color? Well, we mix it with its opposites. So if you were using primary colors, you would mix all three primary colors together and that would give you a muted gray tone. But what if, what if I was using blue and I wanted to mute the blue? Well, then I would go across the color wheel to the opposite color, which is orange, a secondary color. And if I mix blue and orange, then it's going to mute those colors. It's going to mute my blue. So in order to paint like Andrew Wyeth, we want to mute our colors. Now you can do that by using liquid watercolors. I've got some here. And liquid water watercolors are very vibrant. And so what you'll wanna do is put some water on your plate and just take a tiny bit of that blue, just a tiny little dab of that blue. It doesn't take much. You can see it makes it very bright. Now, if I wanna add a little bit more water here, and then I wanna take just a tiny bit of my orange and mix it in. Now I've got a little bit too much green, so I'm gonna pull in some more blue. And you just keep mixing until you get the shade that you want. So this is looking a little bit better. I've got kind of a muted blue green and you can see I've got lots of water so that's going to help mute the color as well. It's gonna make it less um, vibrant. I'll show you on my scrap piece of paper here. You can see it's just a very light blue gray. Of course, if you want to make it a little more, um, a little darker, you can just add a little bit more blue to it. Now you can see it's a little darker. You can also do this with just a plain watercolor um, children's set. And I would use the lid to mix your paint colors on, but you want to add a little bit of water. I like to dry out my watercolor brush on a paper towel just to get that color out, to clean my brush a little bit and I wanna pull up some of that blue. So I'm gonna add some water to my blue and then add it to my lid here. Okay, you can see I've got 
some blue on my lid and it's pretty light already. These watercolor um, palettes like this, they tend to be less vibrant in general. So it might, this might be easier for the younger kids to just use this and add lots of water to a color to kind of lighten it up. You can see here, it already looks kind of blue gray. But with the older kids, if you want to use the liquid watercolors and teach them a bit more about the color wheel, that might be something you could do, or you can just keep it simple and use this. So you can see I've got a nice blue gray. So you might want to give your kids a scrap piece of watercolor paper just so they can experiment with their um, colors and get the right color that they want. I'm going to set that aside now and we can get to our project. So what you're going to want to do is give your kids a pencil and allow them to sketch out a scene. I would recommend doing a winter scene. So we can make a hill, let's pretend it's covered with snow. And then let's see, I probably got, I like to build a snowman in the winter. So you could draw a snowman with some arms. And we're gonna go over this with crayon. Watercolor Resist would take a little bit too long for what we have in class. So we're gonna use crayons. You can also use soft pastels if you have those. I've got some soft oil pastels here. I'm gonna experiment with both and compare them and see. Um, and maybe we've got some trees off here in the distance. And remember, we've got our window pane here in the way. So that's gonna provide another form of resist for us. Once we pull this up, that part will be white and we'll get to see where the window frame is and then the winter scene behind it. So you're gonna take a white crayon or a white soft pastel and you're gonna color everything white that you want to be white in the end. Like if my hill is covered in snow, I'm gonna color that white. Don't worry about not getting it on the tape. It's okay if you get on the tape. I'm gonna actually experiment here. I'm gonna compare my soft pastels and my crayon and see which one does better here. So I'll use crayon on the left and you just color that in really well. I know you can't really see it on the video, but you're just coloring that whole hill white. Now, I wanna add my tree in, so I'm just gonna do an evergreen tree out here in the distance. And you know, trees aren't all just one shade of green. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of blue-green just to add some variety. And I don't wanna do it solid because there's snow out there. So I might go back and add a little bit of snow to the top, add some more green here. Make it look like I've got needles coming out everywhere. And then I'm gonna go back over that with just a little bit of white on the ends. We've got a little bit of snow. And then I'm gonna color my snowman. And then you can add his arms. And you can go back and add the eyes. And the coal around the edges. If you wanna outline it, you can. Since I've got him sitting on that white hill, you probably wouldn't be able to see him very well. And then of course he needs a carrot nose. So we'll add that in. Now, something else that could be fun to do in the background is to add some snowflakes. Now you could do simple little stars or dots or a combination of the two. We're just gonna make it look like it's snowing outside. I'm gonna try the oil pastels over here. Of course, you wanna keep those a little bit small. And then I'm gonna put some down here at the bottom too. You could get more elaborate with your winter scene and add a building or anything else that you would see or more trees. I'm just keeping it simple for this video, but feel free to be creative with that or to let your kids have some um, creativity with that. And now we've got that down. So we're going to get our brush and some water. 
and I'm gonna use the liquid on one side and the the palette on the other just to compare um, so you can see. So I'm gonna do the liquid watercolors on this side. You can see it's a light blue. I'm gonna talk to the kids about painting in one direction, painting across your paper and not um, all over the place. Okay, and remember, it's okay if they come down here a little bit, it might add some interest wherever you didn't get the crayon down really thickly. It'll just add a little bit of shadow to your hill so it's not just solid white. And I'm gonna try the palette on this side. And you can already see where my crayon and soft pastel are resisting the watercolor. So it's gonna keep my paper white in that area. And if they get it on the snowman, it's okay because it should be resisting the watercolor. Okay, so we've got that down. Now something else that you can do in class, I forgot to grab for this video, is to sprinkle some salt on your watercolor while it's still wet. Um, you have to do it quickly after you've painted because it will make a really cool effect on your watercolor. If your paper is still wet like this is and you sprinkle salt on, it'll dry and it will add some flakes of snow wherever the salt soaks up your watercolor. It makes a really cool effect. I experimented with this the other day and it was really neat. Um, if you want, you can have them, I would actually do this before you watercolor, but I forgot to do it, so I'm gonna do it now but you can take your black crayon and just trace the edges of that tape. Uh, you might have to be careful with it. Your hand might slip. Again, this would be easier to do while your paper is dry, but this will help provide an outline for your window frame. Now I chose to do a light blue gray sky color because when I think of winter, I kind of think of blue-gray skies. It seems like whenever it's a snowy day, that's kind of the color of the sky. But if your kids want to be creative and add some darker blues or purples like I did in the example I showed you a minute ago, you certainly can. So I've got that on here. Now ideally, you'll let this dry all the way um, before you pull your tape up but I just want to show you what it looks like. And just be very careful when you're pulling it up because it's easy to rip your paper. But you can see I've got a window frame on here now. I kind of smeared my paint here. Let me go back over that. Watercolor is pretty forgiving. Um, you can just go back over it if you need to. I love how easy this is and what a cool effect it is when you pull your tape up. It really looks like you're looking out of a window. So there you go. There is our sample of an Andrew Wyeth inspired window scene. And as you can see, the soft pastel and the crayon both resist really well. Um, I think the soft pastel actually does quite better over here um, than this did, but I think either one would work great. And you can see, actually up here, it looks like my crayon did better on the snowflakes. So you can let the kids experiment or if you want to just do crayons because that's easier, then go for it. But have fun, enjoy art, and thanks for joining me.